twice this election cycle, I have done videos basically detailing all of the really idiotic attacks against Bernie Sanders by the mainstream media. And one of the common themes in those videos is that, look, these attacks are getting more and more desperate and dim-witted. And I think just like a month or two ago, I released the video saying, you know, the attacks on Bernie are getting even dumber and more desperate. And it's like each time I put out one of those videos, they're listening and they're taking it as a challenge because I've got a couple more attacks for you that are so stupid that it's it's breaking my brain. Like, I don't get how they can print this and think this is a scandal. We've got them now. Like, it, it's it's honestly baffling to me. But nonetheless... They keep doing it because they're looking for whatever they can possibly find. And if you'll recall last week, I did a video talking about how they're just trying to overwhelm Bernie Sanders with a plethora of attacks. So that way, if they hit him with a bunch of things simultaneously, you can't possibly dodge all of that. You can't respond to all of it. So you have to let some of it kind of go. And then their goal, I'm assuming, is for that, you know, attack to go unaddressed and hopefully grow and ultimately consume Bernie Sanders because it's no secret that he's against the status quo and they want to take him down because he's a threat to the status quo. So last week, the New York Times published a hit piece on Bernie Sanders that essentially portrayed him as an un-American hippie communist sympathizer and this week Politico claimed that he's turned into an oligarch that he once railed against with his whopping $2 million in net worth. Now, I want to talk about some new attacks against Bernie Sanders this week because these are the more moronic attacks where I read this and I thought, why would they think this is a scandal? Now, the title is, it kind of suggests that, you know, there's something really nefarious going on here when it comes to Bernie. So the first example I have is by Kristen Tate, published by The Hill. The headline reads, millions of taxpayer dollars fueled Bernie Sanders to wealth success. Now, if you just read that headline, you'd think, okay, that sounds pretty odd. So what, he's benefiting off of our tax dollars? Like, it reminds you of something that Duncan Hunter was doing. He was literally indicted for corruption, mind you, because he was taking campaign funds, I believe, something along those lines, and buying, like, Steam games. So you, you get the sense that it's something like that, something overtly and explicitly pertaining to corruption. But what's the actual scandal here? He takes a salary as a member of Congress. That's literally the scandal. <laughs> That's what this headline is about. Bernie Sanders used taxpayer dollars to propel himself to wealth by accepting a salary as a mayor, as a member of the House of Representatives, and ultimately as a senator. How is that a scandal? And I, I know that you're going to think that I'm being hyperbolic. Let me read to you a, a paragraph here so you can get a sense of what this person was trying to accomplish. Today, Sanders rakes in $174,000 every year from serving in the upper chamber Senate. He has earned $2,248,500 in his 12 years there and had earned $2,272,500 from his 16 years in the House. So federal taxpayers have financed his life to the tune of more than $4.5 million. Ha! Got him! So he's taking a salary. Okay. Bernie. You hypocrite. Why aren't you working for free? <laughs> I mean, is that the assumption? I don't get it. This is the attack? That's what the article was about? He's propelling himself to wealth and to success because he accepted his salary. Duh. No shit, Sherlock. Now, you can make the argument that members of Congress are paid too much because... I would certainly agree with that. I think that they don't do enough to get paid six figures. But with that being said, the fact that he is accepting a salary is not controversial at all. At all. Not even a little bit. In fact, I would be a little bit weirded out if he was working for free. Because if you're a member of Congress, this is time consuming, right? You have to be in D.C. if that's not your actual home. You spend hours upon hours traveling 
every single week. So it's incredibly draining, I'm assuming, and taxing on someone. So it would be weird for him to not accept a salary, but that's literally the crux of this argument. He's accepting a salary. Okay, but that's not all. So there's another article. This was published by Politico, by Holly Otterbeam. And Politico loves publishing hit pieces on Bernie Sanders. But this is an article that supposedly demonstrates how Bernie Sanders has changed since he accumulated all of his wealth. Now, it chronicles his transition from humble outsider in D.C. to an insider, I guess, shill? with an article titled Bernie Sanders Extreme Makeover. A candidate with an aversion to schmoozing and ring kissing bows to the necessities of a top tier presidential campaign. So when you read that, what's the implications? You assume that it's pointing to him selling out. Oh, what? He's no longer being principled, I'm assuming? He's bowing to the necessities of a top, top tier presidential campaign? So does that mean that he is courting wealthy donors? He's holding these private fundraisers? Is that what they mean? You know, when I, when I, whenever I hear words like uh, schmoozing and kissing up and kissing the ring, that tells me, oh, well, they're trying to court donors. But what does it actually mean? What is this actually about? Let me read a paragraph to you. So, the candidate with an aversion to schmoozing and a reputation as a loner in the Senate is bowing to a side of politics he's long despised. Sanders is making dozens of calls each week to elected officials, labor leaders, and party chiefs, according to his aides. In between his rallies, he regularly meets with politicians behind closed doors, and surrogates, including Representative Ro Khanna, the co-chairman of his campaign, are aggressively courting House members. In other words... He's campaigning. That's the scandal. Because if you want to run for president, I think it would behoove you to try to build coalitions, make connections, and maybe court the endorsements of members of the House of Representatives. That's what uh, Ro Khanna is doing. So that's the scandal here. Do you get it? He's, he's, uh, he's campaigning. Gotcha, bitch! Now, the reason why he's changed... Well, you know, back in 2016, when he ran against Hillary Clinton... He didn't do this. He wasn't having these closed-door meetings with politicians and try to get their endorsements. He just said, you know, screw it. I'll just campaign on the issues, and if I get their endorsements, then I get their endorsements. If not, then whatever. But what they fail to realize here is that Hillary Clinton basically had the endorsement of basically every politician and insider locked up before Bernie even entered the race. And furthermore, I don't even believe he was entering with the intention of winning. I think he just wanted to offer voters a left-wing choice and wanted to push Hillary Clinton to the left. So now that he's a front-runner, he is a front-runner, one of two maybe, I mean, he's in it to win it. So why wouldn't he court endorsements when we saw how powerful that was back in 2016? A lot of the endorsements from Hillary Clinton you know, particularly pertaining to superdelegates, gave everyone the impression that she was a foregone conclusion. Why wouldn't he pursue that if he knows how powerful that is, especially when it comes to mainstream media? But he's attacked for it. He had an extreme makeover because he is changing up his strategy a little bit. I mean, do you understand? These are the scandals that they're reporting on, the quote-unquote scandals. He's accepting a salary and he's campaigning. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why they would publish something like this. Like for me, I dislike a lot of politicians, right? Donald Trump, Joe Biden. I, I just like a ton of conservative and centrist politicians. However, this is my thought process. If I am covering a story that I don't think actually is credible or it doesn't say enough about a candidate, I withhold from publishing that video. Because what it is going to portray me as is someone who's just looking for any and all reasons to criticize Joe Biden and Donald Trump when that, that hurts your credibility. I'm not going to criticize them unless I believe there's a good reason to criticize them. And even when I've published some videos, I did one about, um, what's his name? The guy from Alabama, the senator who defeated Roy Moore. I'm blanking on his name. What's his name? Doug Jones. I published a video on Doug Jones and in the video... And I don't even remember what this was about. It was an interview that he did. And I said, look, maybe I'm just being, you know, a little bit overly skeptical about him. And maybe he doesn't mean X 
and I'm just kind of imposing what I think he means. I even put that caveat. But here, they're just basically, they're going out of their way to be idiotic and say, Bernie, you took a congressional salary. Gotcha. It's just, if they think this is going to hurt Bernie Sanders, it, it's not. It's going to hurt their credibility more than anything. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.